of China's electric vehicle industry, a modern-day behemoth of designer manufacturing. It produces more EVs than every other nation on Earth combined. It corners the market in areas where the global West isn't even ready to compete. It's so good at what it does that with the exception of only Tesla, it wipes the floor with automakers like Ford, Toyota, Volkswagen, Nissan, Porsche, and more. Today, we're going to be talking about China's electric vehicle industry, EVs. It's going to be a wild ride. Buckle up. You said it. We got this uh, this crazy YouTube video you sent over called China's electric car industry is insane from uh, the channel Mega Projects. And let me tell you, the title's not wrong. But before we even get into it, let me ask you, when you think electric car, what pops into your head? Tesla, probably, right? Right. Like a sleek, futuristic, or maybe one of those Nissan Leafs, you know, something from Europe or America. It's the image we're used to. Totally. But get this. While we're busy picturing those, China's out here running laps around everyone else in the EV game. And I'm not just talking about building a few electric cars here and there. I'm saying they're producing more EVs than every other country dot combined. It's pretty mind-blowing. And what's even more interesting is that this isn't some, like, recent thing. This dominance, it was planned like decades ago, planned. Wait, really? You're telling me the strategy goes way back. Oh yeah, way back. The video, it uh, it points out how China was already a major player in, get this, electric bicycles, e-bikes, yeah. back in the early 2000s. Like they were mass producing them, selling them like hotcakes. Mm. Meanwhile, most of the world was still looking at them like they were some kind of toy. It's true. I remember when e-bikes were a rare sight at least where I'm from. So while everyone else was still trying to figure out this whole e-bike thing, China was already thinking, what, like 10 steps ahead? Exactly. They used e-bikes as like a testing ground. Mm -hmm. They were scaling up production, refining the technology, all while the rest of us were snoozing. That strategy, it gave them a massive head start. I mean, they basically had a crash course in battery tech, electric motors, mass production, all the stuff you need for EVs. Hey, want our free AI dope top AI tools that we use? Chat below. It's our live Google Sheets packed with over 100 killer tools, video, music, photos, AI voices, productivity, script writing, YouTube hacks, captions, the works, always growing, live Google Sheet, always free, AI, dope top AI tools that we use. Download and chat below. Back to the show. So basically, by the time the US and Europe started taking electric vehicles seriously, China was already in the driver's seat foot on the gas and they haven't hit the brakes since yeah and, and you can't talk about this without talking about the Chinese government yeah they have been all in on EVs from the start yeah the uh, the video mentioned government subsidies they're given in incentives to buyers even mandating that public transportation be electric I mean come on that's a whole nother level it really is it's like they said we're gonna build it and they will come and you know what it worked they created this massive competitive EV market and everyone wants in domestic companies, foreign companies, even Tesla set up shop over there. Yeah. And all that competition, it's fueled insane innovation. I mean, there are so many different EV models in China, it's kind of crazy. So it's not just about like pushing a couple of car models. They've created a whole EV ecosystem over there. 100%. We're talking electric buses, trucks, vans, even street sweepers. They're electrifying everything that moves. That's insane. I mean, it's like like comparing a bicycle to a spaceship, you know, when you look at what other countries are doing, it's just... And while other countries are still debating whether EVs are even a good idea, China's out here setting speed records. Oh, yeah. What was that stat? The video mentioned something crazy about the performance of some of these Chinese EVs. Oh, yeah. The Yangwang U9, for example, it goes from 0 to 60 miles per hour in under 2.5 seconds. That's faster than a lot of supercars. Okay, no, that's just showing off. But uh, with all this momentum, I got to ask... Are there any, like, any bumps in the road for China's EV industry? Because the video did mention a couple of challenges. Of course, every industry has its challenges, like range anxiety. That's a big one, especially for larger vehicles like pickup trucks. Imagine trying to tow something and you run out of battery in the middle of nowhere. Yikes. Not a good look. Not at all. And then there's the global aspect. You know, the U.S. and Europe, they're watching all this happen and they're kind of freaking out. Right, like a little bit of awe mixed with a whole lot of... Uh-oh, we need to catch up. Exactly. And now you've got tariffs, trade barriers. Things are getting messy. Yeah, the video mentioned that stuff. Seems like things are getting a little complicated. It's a tricky situation, no doubt. On one hand, you've got China pushing the boundaries of innovation in the EV space. They're making EVs more affordable. And they're making the world a greener place. But on the other hand, there are legitimate concerns about fair competition. 
And what happens if one country controls too much of a vital industry like this? Yeah. It's a tough balancing act, for sure. No kidding. And it feels like we're just scratching the surface here. Oh, yeah. We've only just begun to dive in. Okay, so we've established that China's EV scene is less like a gentle wave and more like a tsunami wiping out the competition. But who are these big players in this electric ocean? The video mentioned a couple of names like uh, BYD. They're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tesla. Yeah, BYD is an interesting one. Their name, it actually stands for Build Your Dreams, which is, I gotta admit, pretty catchy. But they're not just about a catchy name, they're producing some serious numbers. Mm -hmm. By the end of 2023, get this, they had produced 6 million EVs. 6 million? 6 million. That made them the first company globally to ever hit that number. Yeah. And it shows how strategic they've been. So how did they pull it off? Well, they started with batteries, right? But here's the thing. Instead of just supplying batteries to other car companies, they did something interesting. They, uh, what do they call it? Vertically integrated. Okay, hold up. Now you're just using fancy business jargon. Vertically integrated. What does that even mean? Basically, it means they decided to control pretty much every single part of the EV making process themselves. We're talking batteries, motors, all the components, even the lithium for the batteries. Yeah. That gives them like ultimate control over their supply chain, which in a market that's blowing up like this is a massive advantage. So while other car companies are out there scrambling, begging for parts, BYD is just like, nope, we got this. Hit the gas, churn them out, right? Exactly. <sighs> and it's not just like they're pumping out one type of car either. We're talking a huge range. They got everything from affordable little compacts like the Dolphin, all the way up to luxury SUVs, and of course that crazy fast Yang Wang U9 we talked about. Oh yeah, and the electric buses. I mean, those things are everywhere. Tell me about it. BYD has already sold like over 100,000 electric buses worldwide. They're not just after the car market. They're coming for public transportation too. It's kind of scary how good they are at predicting where things are headed, you know? Right. And speaking of ambitious, BYD isn't the only one making waves. Another company the video highlighted was SAIC Motor. They're, uh, they're kind of a big deal. State-owned, huge company. SAIC Motor, that's the one that's partnered with a bunch of the Western car companies, right? Yep, they've got joint ventures with companies like Volkswagen, General Motors, you name it. But here's the thing. They're not content with just being the quiet partner in the background. They're pushing their own brands, too. And they are known for pumping out new models faster than you can say electric vehicle. It's crazy. The video made it seem like they release a new model, like, every week. Maybe not every week, but it's close. They are constantly innovating, experimenting, always looking for that next big thing in the EV world. And they're not shy about saying they want to be number one in the world. So this isn't just about dominating the Chinese market for them. They're thinking globally. Oh, absolutely. They're already making moves in Europe, Australia, other markets with their brands like MG and Rising Auto. And let me tell you, these are some good looking competitive EVs they're putting out. They're selling them at prices that'll make you do a double take. Yeah. So it's not just BYD we got to keep an eye on. The entire Chinese EV industry is gunning for the crown. It's like a tidal wave of innovation coming from over there. And it's not just about the number of cars either, these Chinese EVs, they're seriously impressive. Like that insane acceleration we were talking about earlier, the Yangwang U9 doing zero to 60 in under 2.5 seconds, still can't get over that. Yeah, and that's just the tip of the iceberg. In the video, it showed a bunch of other Chinese EVs with crazy performance numbers. Right top speeds that rival supercars, ranges that seem like they're straight out of the future. They're changing what people thought was possible with EVs. And then there was that, what was it called? The Xiaomi EV? Right. They make phones, right? Xiaomi. Now they're making cars too. Yeah. It just goes to show how diverse and kind of crazy the Chinese EV scene is. They're a tech giant, right? And now they're jumping head first into the EV market with their electric SUV. Mm -hmm. And get this, rumor has it that this thing has a range of almost 500 miles on a single charge. Wait, hold on. 500 miles on one charge. That's that's farther than I can drive without needing a bathroom break. It's nuts, right? The point is, China, they're catching up and in a lot of ways surpassing what other countries are doing with EVs. Mm. And they're doing it all at a fraction of the cost because, let's face it, EVs are still crazy expensive over here. Oh, don't remind me. It's like you need to win the lottery just to afford a base model these days. Exactly. And that's another huge advantage China has going for them. Their EVs, they're just way more affordable, even with import tariffs, which makes them super attractive to buyers all over the world. So we're talking cutting edge tech and affordability. No wonder the US and Europe are getting a little sweaty. The video mentioned that they're trying to fight back, you know, with tariffs and trade barriers, but 
It didn't sound like it was working too well. It's like trying to stop a tsunami with a screen door. China. They're finding ways around those barriers. Like, they're setting up shop in places like Mexico just to get around those U.S. tariffs. They're playing chess while everyone else is playing checkers. Talk about a power move. They are not messing around. It sounds like they've decided that they're going to be the EV kings and queens of the world no matter what. And honestly, they're on track to do it. Their exports are through the roof. They're only gaining more influence. So it really makes you wonder, what does the future hold? Are we all going to be cruising around in Chinese EVs someday? So we're potentially looking at a future where like Chinese EVs are as common as, I don't know, smartphones. But beyond just like who's selling the most cars, this whole EV revolution, it's got to be having a huge impact on the, uh, the planet, right? 100%. This is way bigger than just economics. It's about creating a more sustainable future for everyone. And EVs, no matter who's building them, they're a critical part of tackling climate change. Yeah, that's a really good point. It's easy to get caught up in like the competition of it all. But at the end of the day, it's the environmental impact that really matters. Right. And China, with this massive investment they've made in EV tech, they're really accelerating that global shift toward greener transportation. Yeah. They're setting a pace that everyone else is basically being forced to follow. So it's like a kind of double edged sword. We've got this potential economic shakeup, but we've also got this huge opportunity to finally tackle climate change. Exactly. Challenges and opportunities. And that's what makes this whole situation so fascinating. Because the US and Europe, they can't just sit back and watch this happen. Okay, so what's the play then? How do the US and Europe actually catch up? Because we can't just like be spectators in this EV revolution. Right away. They got to get serious yeah. about investing in their own EV industries, yeah. fostering innovation. And I'm not just talking about throwing money at the problem. They got to create an environment where companies are encouraged to push the boundaries, come up with new ideas, you know. Mm -hmm. So, like, what kind of things are we talking about? How do they actually do that? We're talking policies that encourage research and development, streamlining regulations, making it easier for these companies to actually build and sell EVs. And got to make them more appealing to consumers, right? Yeah, because right now, EVs still feel kind of like a luxury item for a lot of people. Exactly. So make them more affordable, make them more practical, make people want to buy them. It's like we're in a marathon, not a sprint, and we've uh, maybe stopped for a snack break a few too many times. Something like that. Well, but it's not too late to catch up. So what would it take to not just catch up, but actually get ahead? Any ideas? Well, one thing that comes to mind is collaboration. Collaboration. Like with China. Exactly. It sounds crazy, right? <laughs> but look at what Tesla's done with their Gigafactory in Shanghai. That's one of their most productive factories in the world. It proves that even with all this competition, there's still room to work together. It's true. Sometimes a little bit of co-opetition can really light a fire under everyone. Right. Imagine if the U.S. and China, or Europe and China, if they could find more ways to collaborate on research, on development, on making EVs more accessible to everyone. We'd be unstoppable. We could create like a global EV dream team, pool our resources, share our expertise, and make electric transportation the norm, not just for the wealthy, but for everyone. Now that's a future I can get behind. Now you're talking. It might sound a little too optimistic, but hey, we've seen countries cooperate on other big challenges before, like space exploration. Why not a global initiative for clean energy? We got to start thinking bigger. Love it. Big ideas for a big challenge. So as we wrap up this deep dive, what's the like the key takeaway for our listeners, you know, for the everyday drivers out there who are just looking for a reliable ride that doesn't cost a fortune to fuel up or pollute the planet? I think the biggest takeaway here is that the future of transportation is electric and it's coming fast, hmm. like really fast. And this shift to EVs, it's going to mean more choices for consumers, faster innovation, and hopefully a much quicker transition to a cleaner, greener world. If you think the switch to EVs is big, watch this next video to find out how the coming AI humanoid robot labor explosion will truly transform life as we know it.